uh, in this video we'll talk about how to make Avro schema backward compatible and uh, forward compatible and uh, something that you can't migrate once the changes when made in the, to the schema and and even if you want to migrate some of the thing or or let's say if you want to remove any of the field there is a way to do that which is the alias option that the schema gives us so let's start quickly with you know how to make backward compatibility yeah with the Avro change so let me quickly see that if uh, schema registry is up and running so, uh, oh sorry okay yes the schema registry is up and in the back side you see that the schema registry is uh, missing the port 8081 as you can see this property file schema registry that property is fine perfect and for this demo this is the type customer and which has the first name and the last name and the topic here is this log local test customer and this is the value the schema for value as you know uh, we have the option to assign the schema for the value and the key so this schema is for the value so let me just register this schema so we got the schema registered here if you want to see that schema is registered uh, and how it looks uh, just uh, see that this is how it looks and uh, so yeah so uh, the schema is registered now and this was the con uh, first version and the second version what we want is uh, I want to just uh, add a new new field which is let's say middle name so everything is same middle name is a string type as well so middle name so okay, perfect so let's let's start it with this change so it's saying that the schema being registered is incompatible with an earlier schema so the first version of the schema that we have just created uh, right before this is not compatible with that new change that we are making it here because it's saying that it's it's not compatible but what compatibility it's checking so if if i show you i have this endpoint config and if you hit this endpoint it gives you that in the schema registry we have configured that every schema must adhere to the backward compatibility so this is the setting if you make it none uh, let's say uh, if you want to set it uh, if, you, if you set it none uh, it won't check whatever you will do you just register it but when the message you will produce a message and the consumer will start consuming it and if any incompatibility uh, um, uh, comes there it will start breaking there so it is just first level check uh, while you are registering the schema so you can see that I have uh, I have configured it like the every schema must adhere the backward compatibility and we have seen that what backward compatibility says it says that data written by the older schema can be read by the newer schema so new uh, if any message which has already in the system which has first name and the last name and you are making a change into the schema and that new schema has this middle name and if that older message comes to this schema they won't be able to map it like you know uh, so the message will just see that yeah first name is first name map this last name is last name got map but they will not ask they will not see any values in the message that the, you know the consumer has received for the middle name so it's saying that it's, it's not backward compatibility the new schema that we are trying to place so what confluence says is you define the default value so let's say if you define the new value let's say i say null if the value is not there just consider it as null so if you do that and try to so first we have to escape it let's go it and try to register it it's saying somewhere what is the error 
So if you can see closely, I'm setting the value null, but the middle name type is saying that the value is a string only, it can only accept a string. So either I should remove here null and put it like this the empty space but it's also not the something that we can recommend it so let's put it a null and what Evro gives us is that provide the type the union so when you start with this packet and you say that null either the value can be null or the string for the middle name one thing that you have to notice here is so, so let's let's uh, so first parameter is now so the default value is now let me just change the ordering of this one so if you change the order and say that by default uh, okay so the first is a string and the second is null I'm saying that default value is null. If you try to register it, even it says that no, what's expected comma is separate and blah blah blah. So so what we have to do is say uh, whatever the default value you have must so if you define the must value uh, sorry default value type now so whatever the default value that you give here their type must match with the first element of this union so let's say if it is integer then you must have the integer value here if it is boolean here first and uh, you must have the boolean value first so it union means that you can have value either now you have the string here or or, or you can have uh, sorry uh, i can say i have the boolean like this one uh, so you can have the multiple type of you know data i whatever you want here so this we can have either of these values okay so let's start with this one and if you register it Okay, so uh, here is a problem. Uh, I have to record it. So now, type null or the string name. The new property name is middle name, and the default value is null. So if you register it, it will got registered. Properly. Yeah, so it's got registered. So this new schema is backward compatible. Means if the older producer produce any message and that message has no any middle name in it the consumer would consider it this default value simply means yes and it won't break okay so uh, we'll talk about now forward compatibility and what it says is uh, the data which is written uh, by the new schema mm can be read by the old schema so uh, whatever the amendment that we will be doing as part of the new schema and if the messages comes from that using that schema the old schema uh, or the consumer must consume the new messages so uh, and for that what i have done is so this is the what the the earlier release is more schema was look like middle name and this is something the changes that we have done now in the as part of the forward schema what uh, the new scope is to just rename this field the last name so the last name is no longer exists in the new schema and we want to call it as uh, the surname this is the new scope is so uh, let's go and make this change and see what happens so if so before we go that uh, let me show you that uh, I have set up the schema registry to must uh, comply with the forward company uh, You can have the option to make the backward or the forward or you can have the full 
which is basically the combination of backward and the full and the, and the forward compatibility and uh, if you don't want any you know validation on the schema backward or the forward completely check while registering the schema just make it none once before it comes it will get registered and uh, but the only caveat here is that when the old messages will hit the consumer uh, uh, this is something that you have to see that how you handle the scenario so uh, this is the new the last name i'm trying to use with the surname and let's do that try to do that so when when i'm trying to rename that property it says that schema being registered is incompatible with the earlier schema so uh, let's say this is a new schema and if you produce any message with a surname and the older schema is still expecting that the value would have the last name so the simply the message would fail there so they must be asking that the last name here so so uh, here uh, how we can make it uh, here to get this surname on the place of the last name so uh, so uh, let's uh, in essence this is the through that you can do that surname and uh, Let's import it and uh, here we go. So what I'm essentially I'm saying is uh, last name may also call with the surname, and if you try to register it, uh, um, so error here. Okay. Here we go. So uh, so again you know we missed you know defining the default name and then now so better you know whenever you create a new property uh, uh, always define the default uh, like we have released uh, for the middle name so that even if you don't pass it if you if you don't want to you know if you simply want to remove this field the older schema would uh, replace with the default value if the new message comes and these properties are not in that schema uh, otherwise uh, you have the option to you know provide the alias and get things uh, compatible so this is uh, every schema advice uh, is like you know if you have anything primary key in your schema uh, don't touch it let it be the required one and uh, always give the default value to the fields uh, because it helps you to remove in future and also it helps you to you know handle the multiple scenarios uh, i don't know what what the scopes emerge based upon the you know the new changes in the journey and be careful whenever using the enums because when when you define the enums and their values uh, it can't be removed it's it's like uh, it can't be like the other property and don't rename the fields you can add the alias instead uh, as as we have seen in the demo and uh, always give default values never delete uh, the required fields so these are like the advice you always uh, follow 